Greetings and salutations. Welcome again to part 8 of our decision theory lecture series. Here we are looking at the expected value of perfect information, EVPI. We have looked at payoff tables, Maximax, Maximin, Herwix, Laplace, Minmax Regret, expected monetary value, and now we'll be looking at two methods for calculating the EVPI. This was originally going to be the last of our eight part lectures, but we have thrown in a surprise part nine to the series. So look out for part nine. The question before us, what is the most that should be paid to the economist if he could predict perfectly which state of nature will prevail? This question is asking us to calculate the expected value of perfect information. The expected value of perfect information is the most that we would pay anyone for perfect information. It should be noted that perfect information does not exist. Or we can get our very good forecasts, but forecasts are never perfect. Two steps in this process. Step 1. Calculate the expected value with perfect information. So expected value with perfect information tells us what the expected value would be if we had perfect information. And this is the sum of the probabilities multiplied by the best values from each of the associated columns. We'll discuss it a bit more when we go through the actual steps. Step two is we calculate the EVPI as the absolute difference between the expected value with perfect information and the best EMV that we calculated from the expected monetary value step. The absolute difference just means when we subtract, we ignore any negative signs. We leave out negative signs. One way to look at it, we can see it as the larger number minus the smaller number. For cost, the expected value with perfect information will always be the lowest possible expected value. So it will be lower than the previous best EMV. So for cost, the EVPI will be the best EMV minus the expected value with perfect information, which would be the lowest possible cost. For profit, the expected value with perfect information will be the highest possible profit. So it will be the, the EVPI will be the expected value with perfect information minus the previous best expected monetary value. So here we go. We are looking here at the payoff table related to choosing a country for our new factory. The alternatives before us, South Korea, Philippines, Mexico, and Jamaica. And we face three states of nature, which are unfavorable, average, and favorable. The figures in this table represent costs in millions for setting up the factory. So let's go ahead. We are doing step one. So the first thing we need to do is identify the best results in each column since we will need to multiply them by the probabilities. So the unfavorable column, we have South Korea 19, Philippines 19.2, Mexico 22.5, and Jamaica 25. Of these, the lowest cost is 19 million. So we identify that as the best result in the unfavorable column. For the average state of nature, we have 18.5, 17.1, and 21.2. Of these, the lowest is 16.8 million. And remember we are choosing the lowest because these figures represent cost. In the favorable column, we have 17.6, 14.9, 13.8 and 12.5. The 
the lowest of which is 12.5 million. So we identify these. So these are our best possible results from each of the states of nature. Next, we're going to now incorporate the probabilities and multiply each value by its associated probability and total the results. So for our expected value with perfect information, we're going to say 0 multiplied by 19 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 16.8 plus 0 0.4 multiplied by 12.5. This, of course, gives 15.3 million. So we are saying that with perfect information, our expected cost could be as low as 15.3 million. Now, if you recall, the best EMV that we had identified before was 16.17 million. And we had identified that as the lowest expected cost. So now we're saying we can actually reduce our expected cost from 16.17 million to 15.3 million with perfect information. As a result, the value of this perfect information to us is the difference between these two figures. So the EVPI is equal to 16.17 million minus 15.3 million, which works out to 0 0.87 million so the most that we would be willing to pay for perfect information in this scenario is 0 0.87 million or eight hundred and seventy thousand dollars this gives us an upper limit for negotiations because since we know that perfect information does not exist it means we would not be willing to pay anybody at all eight hundred and seventy thousand dollars how much we are willing to pay each person depends on how much we rate their information and that will decide how close to 870 million we are willing to go. But nobody would get $870,000 from us. Now there's another way to calculate this EVPI and we're going to go to this alternate approach. Of course, you do not need to master both approaches. You simply need to choose the one that works best for you and master that method. So let's go. So we're calculating in this case the expected opportunity loss for each alternative. We also could call it the expected regret. So what we need now is to revisit our regret table that was done during the min max regret criteria. And we will note that the EVPI will be equal to the lowest expected opportunity loss. So here goes. Our regret table we have and we now incorporate the probabilities. So for South Korea, we are saying the expected opportunity loss is equal to 0 0.1, the probability, multiplied by 0, plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 1.7 plus 0 0.4 multiplied by 5.1 and that gives us 2.89 so the expected regret for south korea is 2.89 million for philippines we have 0 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.2 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 multiplied by 2.4. The sum of these is 1.13 million. Next, we have for Mexico, 0 0.1 multiplied by 3.5 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 plus 0 0.4 multiplied by 1.3. And that gives us 0 0.87 million. And last but not least, for Jamaica, we have 0 0.1 multiplied by 6 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 4.4 plus 0 0.4 multiplied by 0, which gives 2.8 million. So of these expected regrets, the lowest one is 0 0.87 million.
So our EVPI is equal to the lowest expected opportunity loss, which in this case is $0.87 million. And you'll see that it agrees with what we calculated using the previous method. All right, so we're going to apply all of this to another payoff table. For this payoff table, we're looking at alternative options to meet our capacity requirements. The alternatives before us, build a new plant, subcontract, do overtime, or do nothing. And the same states of nature are before us, unfavorable, average, or favorable. And the figures in this payoff table represent profits. Step one, identify the best result for each state of nature or for each column. So in the first column, we have negative 300,000, negative 20,000, negative 1,000, and zero. Of these, the best is zero, since we prefer not to lose any money than to lose money. For the average column, we have 240,000, we have 90,000, we have 60,000 and zero. The highest of these profits is 240,000. For the favorable column, we have 350,000, 180,000, 110,000 and zero. And the highest profit in this column is $350,000. So now that we have the best possible results under each state of nature, we want to incorporate the probabilities that we were given. So here are our probabilities. So for the EVWPI, which is the expected value with perfect information, it's going to be 0 0.1 multiplied by 0 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 240,000 plus 0 0.4 multiplied by 350,000. And this gives us $260,000. So this is the absolute highest that we expect our profit to go. And this is with perfect information. Now let's recall that previously when we did our expected monetary value, the best possible profit was $230,000. So we are moving from a previous $230,000 to a whopping $260,000. So how much is this perfect information worth to us? It's worth the difference between those two figures. So the EVPI is equal to $260,000 minus $230,000, which means it's worth $30,000. The alternate method is to calculate our expected opportunity loss and choose the lowest one. So we're back to our regret table and we are now incorporating the probabilities. So for build a new plant, the expected opportunity loss is 0 0.1 multiplied by 300,000 plus 0 0.5 times 0 plus 0 0.4 times 0. This gives us $30,000. For subcontract, it's going to be 0 0.1 times 20,000 plus 0 0.5 times 150,000 plus 0 0.4 times 170,000 dollars which gives an expected opportunity loss of 175 of 145,000 I should say for overtime it's 0 0.1 multiplied by 10,000 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 180,000 plus 0 0.4 multiplied by 240,000. That gives us $187,000. Last but not least is do nothing, where we have 0 0.1 multiplied by 0 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by $240,000 plus 0 0.4 multiplied by $350,000. And this gives us $260,000.
So of these expected opportunity loss figures, the lowest one is $30,000. So our EVPI, just like we had calculated before, is equal to how much? $30,000. Nice. So as usual, we say practice until perfection is achieved. And as Fernand Point says, perfection is lots of little things done well. Walk good, and we'll see each other soon. And remember, our next surprise addition to this lecture series, part 9, is looking at simple decision trees. So thank you for watching, and of course, please subscribe and encourage the efforts. All right, all the best guys, walk good.